Howdy everyone, it's me Zombie and welcome back to my happy little cosplay channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I transformed these kids tools into cosplay props. What I really want to show you today is that you don't have to make every little thing on your cosplay from scratch. This saved me a lot of time just by purchasing this really cheap kids tool set on Amazon and then using some of my painting skills to transform them into something completely different. I was able to knock out this project in an evening and it gave me a lot more time to work on other elements of the cosplay. You may recognize this tool belt and that's because it is Nicoletta Goldstein's belt from Devil May Cry. I love Nico and I am so happy that I'm gonna be cosplaying her because she is just wonderful. So without further ado, let's head on over to the crafting table. So this is Nicoletta's tool belt that came with the easy cosplay costume that got sent to me. And it's got all these little hooks and pockets. It's very cute, but something that I was missing from this was all the tools. So instead of making this whole tool set from scratch, I actually found this kid's tool play set. And the tools, at least from what I saw on the website, looked really realistic. So I wanted to open this up and take a look at all the tools. This is a pretty hefty little kit. I'm surprised with how heavy it was. So open her up. <laughs> oh my gosh, this looks like a legit tool set. This is so cool. Oh my gosh. I am shocked. These are actually made of metal. Well, it's not. Let's see, are these actually metal? I mean, yeah, they are. So what I'm gonna do today is repaint this tool set to make it look like Nicoletta's tool set from Devil May Cry. So the plan is to sand things that are sandable and then I can prime and paint these the colors that Nicoletta's tools are. I'm gonna go with a lower grit sandpaper to really take away some of the polymer and paint stuff that we got going on on here. And it's just so the primer can stick extra well. And then for my second pass of sandpaper, I'll go with something a little higher, like 120 grit, and then it should be ready to be primed. Ugh. All right, well, I'm all done sanding, and here's what I got so far. I actually think I'm going to Plasti Dip instead of using a normal primer on these, just because some of these have like a, kind of like a squishy polymer, finish and I think that regular primer is going to chip off of that. I think Plasti Dip is going to be the perfect solution for these. I think this blue painter's tape will work just fine for masking these things off. I don't need anything fancy for this. These will actually be relatively easy to mask, which is a nice change. This screwdriver may be the easiest thing I've ever masked. <laughs> it's just a cylinder. Now that I have my tools all masked, I'm gonna give them a couple layers of black Plasti Dip. I like Plasti Dip for materials like this because it works great on both hard and squishier materials that are a bit more porous, like the handles of these tools, for example. Especially after the surface has been scored, it sticks really well. While I'm waiting on the Plasti Dip to dry, I'm gonna get rid of some of these little strings that are coming off of here. Now, I'm gonna use a lighter to get rid of these, but um, you know, if you don't, safe using that. You can just use scissors, fingernail clippers. I've even seen people use those. Just whatever you're comfortable with. This is starting to look better already. Now that I have all those little thread guys taken care of, I'm gonna start weathering this thing. And this is like a really nice brown for the leather pouch, but in the cutscenes, it really shows that it has a lot of wear and tear. It's got a lot of dirt and grime on it. And I wanna make that look a little bit more lived in. So to do that, I'm gonna be mixing some Vallejo acrylic paint. This is Parasite Brown, which I love that name. That's really cool. And just black. I have my cup of water right here and a chip brush. Now I also have these little sponges and these are really made for like nails and makeup, but I've really liked using these for cosplay too, just for doing kind of a more organic looking ombre effect or even just adding weathering colors. These work really well, so I'm going to use a combination of the chip brush and these little sponges. 
So I am just going straight in, bristles straight down all over the pouch. I'm even kind of scrubbing it in to the material a little bit. Doing this in layers is gonna create a really interesting effect. Now I'm going in just with straight black. And since this is acrylic paint and I'm not adding too, too much water, this is gonna dry fairly quickly. And there's really no wrong or right way to do this. It's just kind of until you get the right amount of dirtiness that you're looking for. So here's what we got so far on putting some layers of acrylic paint on this. It's actually been drying really fast on this material and the material's still really reflective, but I like all the little layers that we have on here so far. This is still a little bit tacky, so I'm gonna set it aside and wait for our tools to be done being Plasti Dipped. All right, so here is my Plasti Dipped hammer. It's now all dry and I'm ready to start painting it. The interesting thing about the hammer is that it actually is supposed to look like wood. So we're gonna fake some wood grain using acrylic paint. I have my same two colors that I was using earlier for weathering the tool pouch. It's that Parasite Brown and uh, Black acrylic paint from Vallejo. I have some different brushes here. The first layer I'm just gonna do in this lighter Parasite Brown color and I'm just gonna do a base coat over the entire handle. All right, and I also mixed a darker brown and a white to kind of get this brownish gray color. I think I'm actually gonna dry brush this on using my chip brush. It'll kind of give it this multi-layered look. That'll be a nice base for our wood pattern. Luckily for me, this paint is drying really fast. So I'm gonna take this other darker brown color the same chip brush and just lightly start brushing it over the lighter color and I'm gonna leave more of the colors beneath exposed than I did the last time now I'm taking this dark brown on a really tiny detail brush and I'm gonna start making my wood grain which is pretty much just a bunch of little lines you can kind of look at a reference photo for a wood hammer when you're doing this. Here's what it looks like after putting all the wood grain details on it. All right, the handle is all dry now, so I'm gonna pull off the masking tape, see how everything looks all together. Maybe some touch-up work involved after taking off the tape, but we'll see. All right, so here it is with all the tape off of it. I think it really only needs just a little bit of touch-up work around right here, so you can kind of tell this is where there's like some glue action from assembly of the tools. But other than that, it looks good. It looks like a wooden handled hammer. <laughs> all the other tools that were Plasti Dip should be dry by now, so I'm gonna go get those and put this aside so we can paint everything else. So you may remember me saying that this pouch actually didn't have a hammer loop for my hammer to hang. And in the reference photos, it looks like the hammer doesn't hang below, but it hangs just a little bit above, about right here. So to make that really quickly and easily without ruining a pocket or ruining the structural integrity of the pouch, I'm gonna use my sewing scissors. I'm gonna be cutting two holes right here. All right, so there's one hole. Now that I have these two holes cut right here, I am gonna use some good old webbing, and I'm gonna be making a loop inside of this, just like this. And this loop will then be able to hold the hammer, but we gotta assemble the thing first. And I'm gonna sew this up real quick in my sewing machine with the power of movie magic. When I am done wiggling my fingers, this will be a loop. Actually, it's not going to be a loop because I need to stick it in here <laughs> and I can't stick it in each side of here if, uh, if it's a loop. <laughs> but what I can do is show you how I'm gonna glue all this together. I'm gonna use some super glue and first 
very gently put a little bit of glue on this seam right here and on this one as well. And putting a little bit of super glue around that seam is just gonna keep it from fraying where I cut it. And go under the seam as well. It's like as a double glue reinforcement. Okay, this is going to work, yay! All right, I made a little mesh sandwich on top of those straps. I'm gonna add a little bit more hot glue on that to reinforce it. And then I'm gonna hold it open like this and just kind of let it settle. And that's just so I can still use this pocket, but those straps will be nice and reinforced inside this pouch. Once this is dry, I'm gonna try putting all the tools where they need to go and see how this holds up. And of course, now that it's all done, I have to try it on and oh my gosh, it fits so well. And I didn't really expect this tool bag that Easy Cosplay gave me to hold up as well as it did with all this stuff inside of it, but it feels strong and it feels good and it looks good too. I am so thrilled <laughs> with how all of this came out. And I have to say, it is very comfy as well. Now before we get into the Makers of the Week, I would love to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on patreon.com. Y'all make videos like this possible, y'all are amazing, and when you guys out there choose to join my Patreon community, you get access to all of my projects early, and you also get access to my Discord community. So, I can't wait to see you over there, and I just want to say thank you guys so much for all your support. This week's Makers of the Week include RIZEN00, you made a Chaos Warrior from Warhammer, and it, this is so over the top and amazing. I love how you did this Warhammer design. I love the colors, the proportions, everything looks so great. You should be so proud. <laughs> and thank you so much for showing me your hard work. Next up we have Santastic Cosplay, who showed me her purple wizard cosplay from Diablo 3. You look outstanding. I love the color scheme of this. You done amazing, and the photo turned out beautiful as well. And last we have Cartanus Prime, who made this WoW armor from season 15. And this is so neat. Again, the big bulky armor. It's awesome. The weapon, the helmet, everything looks so gorgeous. Thank you for showing me. And if you guys out there have something that you're working on, I would love to see it, whether it's cosplay or otherwise. I would love to see what you're working on on Twitter or Instagram. I'm Zombies Workshop on both. You can DM me, you can tag me, I'll see it and I do my best to respond to every single person. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to show me what you make. It really does make my day. So thank you in advance, and I hope to see you over there. If you liked today's video, I do hope that you will press that subscribe button because I would love to see you back. And until next time, bye y'all.